Honorable members, uh, is the department in Honorable Mabicha? Yes, 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 I see them, they're, they're in. Oh, Mabicha? Yes, yes, they're in. The department is in? Yes. Good morning, honorable members. Good morning, honorable MEC and the management from the department. Good morning, uh, staff, support staff from department of from legislature. Uh, honorable members and the MEC, honorable MEC. We are starting with our meeting. Firstly, I just want to apologize. Can we have the agenda, please? I want to apologize that we didn't start in time exactly at nine o'clock as we promised. And I believe we will be pushing a little bit faster as today we will be leaving for our oversight. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, can we go through our agenda, opening and chairperson remarks, roll call and apologies, introductions, portfolio committee on agriculture and rural development, Department of Agriculture and Rural Development uh, will be giving uh, uh, on introductions and other stakeholders, business of the day. Can you raise it a little bit of, uh, up? Briefing by the Department of Agriculture, of Agriculture and Rural Development is 2021 and 2022 first quarter financial and performance reports. And committee a clarity seeking question, observations and remarks, and MEC's remarks, announcement and closure. Uh, Honorable members, honorable MEC, the management and the staff, we are starting this moment with our meeting, which as the portfolio committee, we are mandated by the constitution of our country, uh, section 114, it's mandating us to do oversight on the executive, meaning where they are doing their work in the departments. So we are going to say to the department, before we adopt the agenda, I'm giving these remarks, that as the portfolio committee, uh, we went through and we have seen the report, we want to say to the department, the Honorable MEC, to say there are some issues which we need clarity, which would need to take place and which we need to understand because as the APP is clear and your budget is clear of the commitments which you've made, we believe that this morning the department will be giving us the report which is tangible, the report and the outcomes which have been achieved, which are equally telling to the APP. And I want to say agriculture is a, a very important uh, uh, department because this is the only department which has got the latitude to can create more jobs, especially that in the face of COVID-19, we, uh, uh, the, the, the department is the only department which is working in the outside environment where the productivity cannot be affected so much, uh, especially that we are dealing with poverty in our province. In the nutshell, I don't want to be long. Uh, can we adopt the agenda? Thank you, Chair. I would like to move for adoption of the agenda as a guidelines to our meeting today. Second, man. Chairperson, I will second the proposal. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Sishoka and Honorable Smale. Uh, 
can 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 the, the the agenda go a little bit down because it's now high it's who is dealing with the IT here? Please assist us. Lower it a little bit. Thank you. Uh, any roll call and apologies? Any apologies, honorable members? Chairperson, honorable chairperson, we yes. have apologies from honorable Mate and um, the chairperson, honorable Maskwamin, who are sick. We also have uh, honorable Livia and uh, honorable Pala, who might join us later. Thank you. And any apologies from the department? Um, thanks, Chairperson. Uh, let me check with the HOD if there's any apologies. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Honorable MEC. Uh, because time is not on our side, as you are checking, can we go to number three and do introductions? Uh, honorable members and the, the MEC and the, 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 the department from the Portfolio Committee of Agriculture and Rural Development, I've got uh, Honorable Smale and Honorable Sishoka in the meeting as we continue. Can the department introduce they are members to us, and our support staff will be introduced by Mr. Mabicha. Mr. Mabicha, start the department will follow. Okay. In terms of the staff from the legislature, we don't have any new staff member. The, we have the staff members that are always present, so I think there's no need to to introduce them. They know them. We don't have any new staff member. Thank you. Department of Agriculture. No, let me see. HOD. HOD. Thank you, MEC. Um, thank you, Honorable Chairperson and Honorable Members. Um, greetings. We also do not have uh, new officials uh, that may need introduction to the committee. And also, Honorable Chairperson and Members, we do not have any apology uh, today. Thank you very much. Thank you, Honorable MEC. And do we have other stakeholders in our midst who need to be introduced? No, Chairperson. Thank you, Woma Bija. We are on point four, uh, the business of the day. Honorable MEC. Thanks, uh, Honorable Chairperson, and I will hand over to the HOD to give a briefing. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, once again, and uh, thanks for the opportunity uh, for the department to present the first quarter report of 2021. 22 to the honorable um, members of the portfolio committee. The report uh, um, covers the, the performance information, honorable chairperson, as we have already indicated from the APP, as well as the, <clears throat> the, the financial um, performance. What we have done, honorable chairperson, we summarized 
the, the report into a PowerPoint presentation, which will uh, we thought will enable um, the uh, presentation of the of the information. Um, we have arranged that we, we will fly the presentation from our side. Um, if we are allowed to do so, I think we can continue. I see now it has disappeared from the screen, Honorable Chairperson. If maybe um, the Secretariat can, can also assist us. Uh, the, 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 the presentation is the very presentation you have sent to the Portfolio Committee. It is a summary because of the... If, if the, the, you, you want to flag the summary. Yes, Honorable Chairperson. IT assist us to connect. Is it possible that we can connect um, the department to reflect their summary, which they have prepared for this uh, portfolio committee for today meeting. It is, Chair, if you could kindly just give us a few minutes to just get our things in order. Um, just a few minutes, Honorable Chair, thank you. Thank you very much. Honorable members, the MEC, management, and our support staff, let us wait just for a few minutes for connect uh, the, the IT to connect us. Uh, <laughs> if I might interrupt, please, Chairperson. Honorable Smale. Thank you. Thank you for taking me, Chairperson. It's just on a process Hello. for going forward. Um, with the oversight um, that is happening at half past 12 at um, Tsanin, or, or that commences at Polizia at 12.30, um, is going to require that... Um, uh, that the latest, I don't know where all, all members are. They might be on their road or wherever they are. But it means that we've got to be finished at, um, between 10.30 in order for allowing members and the staff to move from A to B, um, say by 11 o'clock. And um, um, I am just would like to hear from you if we don't get through the program or there's not a sufficient um, uh, uh, participation by everybody. Um, how, how do we deal with the process going forward? Do we reschedule this meeting or how would we, how would we go about? Thank you, Honorable Smiley, for the question. Indeed, Honorable, Honorable Smiley, I, I was not comfortable, firstly, to know that we need to uh, go through the 2021-2022 first quarter report as the day has been scheduled for oversight. So, because the request was already confirmed, that is why you see me continuing with the agenda. But what I want to allude to the meeting is that, let the department present to us, but the department must know that we still need the more engagement on this matter. We want to engage, they will present to us, and after that, we are going to adjourn to take our journey to go and do our oversight. Then we are going to reschedule the meeting again for 2021-2022, this report. Why am I saying this? Because I don't think we are going to engage fully with the report, especially with the time frame we have. This time is not enough from here to half past 10. It's just a short space of time while we are going to travel some distances. Thank you very much for answering, for, 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 um, for, uh, for, for, for posing the question. And let us give the Honorable MEC to present to us the summary. And after the summary uh, department, we feel as portfolio committee and we are not a, 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 a full or we are not all together, especially that people are traveling from different places for us to go to the oversight. We will allow you to present right now the summary, but we're still going to invite you to come and present fully so that we can engage with the report. Thank you very much. Honorable MEC. Honorable Speaker, I've been raising my hand. I'm an honorable uh, 
Oh, yes. I, I didn't see it. I'm so sorry. Okay. Honorable Sishoka? Yes. I think we should, we should, um, we can't do the two together. I think we're having a problem. We're going to have a problem. I think we've got two options here. One option is that we've already with this, started with this process. We must allow this process and engage to the presentation because it does not serve the purpose if the presentation is going to be presented and then we take our books and go to the next activity. I would appreciate a situation where in the present, this thing is presented to us because we're already on it. And then we engage on the report. And once we're done with the report, the time will tell us, I think the program, the other program is in our hands. We can reschedule and have our programs at a later stage and, and, and engage with that. Because if we're going to have a half-cooked meal and leave it then, we're going there, we're rushing there, we're still going to face some problems there. We might even end up not doing anything. So I will appreciate, uh, Chair, if we allow the, the department to present, we deal with these issues, we tell them what is expected, we give them deadline of the issues that we need from them, and then we proceed afterwards. We shouldn't mind too much on the way, the second way, because it's in our hand. We can always adjust time and, and deal with, with, with the other activity. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you, Honorable Sushoka. I think honorable members, uh, we need to, 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 to look deeper into this, the, uh, the oversight, because oversight has been done in all the portfolio committees, and we need to do our hours so that we must have a report as the department will be reporting back to the, uh, so that we are quite sure of what is taking place. So I understand that we need to engage, but we need to mind time if we are not going to finish by 10 hour 30, then it means we are going to be late to, to do our oversight, especially that we have uh, sent the message to the project managers that we will be visiting their areas on such and such a time. So let me give the MEC the, 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 the opportunity to, 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 to present and we will see time. If time allows, we continue with engagement. Indeed, we can leave things hanging, but we need to, caution, to be caution of time. Honorable MEC. Honorable Chair. Chair. Honorable Chair. I don't see a hand. Who is there? Sushoka is speaking. Yes, Honorable Sushoka. I'm, I'm, I'm raising this concern because in actual fact, we are making a plea because already we're late with our support staff to start making rearrangement, given the time that we've started on now and the work that is in, in, in our table. So, so that they make an arrangement, they must rearrange our time schedule for the, for the, for the, for the, for the, for this oversight uh, visit. Honorable Sishoka, Honorable Sishoka, your point is taken. Okay. And the, our, 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 uh, 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 our, our staff is busy rescheduling right now. Thank you. Let us continue so that we can maintain time. Honorable, let me see. Thank you. Um, once again, um, I think in appreciation of the, the time constraint, uh, I will also um, try to move with speed so that we do not uh, add to the the, the, the delays that uh, are actually um, uh, obvious. Um, let's go to the next slide, uh, Mr. Makurele. Uh, just in brief, honorable uh, members, um, we're just indicating that uh, the 2021-22 uh, financial year and, and its APP thereof um, is the, we're actually in the second year of our um, uh, medium term, uh, which is a, the strategic plan for 2020-21 to 2024. And um, there has been some changes um, at the sector level, uh, honorable members, where in the sector level, meaning the National Department of Agriculture and the Departments of Agriculture in the nine provinces, as we reflected and also assisted by the DPME um, in, the, in the presidency. As we were reviewing the, the, the APP and the indicators, there has been some changes. Um, the, the program eight uh, has been discontinued um, and uh, 
the functions or the, the, the indicators were incorporated under, under program three. Um, uh, as honorable members would know, we, we have got standardized output indicators, which we had agreed upon at the sector level, which are um, the same um, across the, the nine provinces, which also enable um, reporting at the, at the national level. And we still have the provincial output indicators that we thought um, we, we need to look at uh, what we are expected to deliver on at the provincial level. And as a result, we developed the inputs that are uh, uh, province or province specific, uh, that are specific to our province um, as Limpopo. Let's go to the next slide. Um, th this table summarizes the, the performance um, uh, uh, in the in the first quarter, the overall we are at uh, 77 percent, um, and the the reasons um, I think honourable members have already gone through them. As I present in the following slides, I'll just uh, zoom into those uh, reasons for variances. And um, as you can see, the underperformance was recorded uh, under mainly Program Three, which is Agriculture Producer Support and Development. Um, uh, as well as uh, Program 2, Sustainable Resource Use um, uh, and, and Management. Next slide. Um, on, on, on this slide, um, as I indicated, um, it's, a, it's where we explain summary of the explanation of the variances. Um, as we look at uh, indicator number two, Point one point one. That is where we we there is one was overperformance. Uh, initially, there was no target uh, in terms of the number of agricultural infrastructure established, but uh, for a reason that uh, during the, the the previous financial year, completion of projects uh, was delayed um, because of the challenges on the part of the contractors, and that then um, uh, required that the the, the, the implementation had to continue, and those projects were completed in the uh, during the quarter under under review. And we are saying as a corrective measure, we continually um, enforcing the invoking actually the clauses in the general conditions of contractors, uh, so that we are able to make sure that the contractors deliver as uh, expected and as agreed. The, there's also a variance. Um, on 214, um, wherein we, there was no uh, target for the quarter, and we managed to complete um, one livestock infrastructure, um, is actually uh, linked to the, the first uh, indicator, which is 211. On 216, number of environmental control production structures uh, uh, constructed, we had targeted four. And I think the context also, honorable members, um, is, is the same as the, the, pre, the two previous indicators that I've already spoken to, because we could only com complete one. Uh, the, the, the reason also is still in relation to the, the challenges on the part of the, of the contractors. And as we have indicated, um, those regular interactions with them um, and also invoking the uh, the GCC clauses, and over and above that, um, we constantly monitor uh, through our project oversight committee internal to ensure that uh, they do comply to the expected completion periods. Let's move on. Um, then on on this slide, um, the only variance is under indicator 2.2.3, which is the number of green jobs uh, that have been where we were targeting to create. Our target was 800 for the quarter. We could only go up to 633. And the reason being that um, for a fact that uh, nationally, there is no conclusion um, of the approvals in terms of the approval processes for the land care business plans of the of the provinces. And this is not just a challenge for Limpopo only, it's a challenge for all the nine provinces. Uh, there has been delays at national level 
to approve the business plans. And um, as a result, we could not commence with the implementation of land care projects uh, because of that, because uh, um, for us to be able to start, we, we need to actually get the you know um, confirmation on the projects and also even the, the budget allocation. So we have not moved even up to now, uh, honorable members, we're still awaiting a response from Nishina and uh, that also uh, contributed um, on us not achieving the targeted number of jobs that we thought we could uh, contribute uh, this uh, current um, or the previous uh, quarter. Next slide. We can skip this one. Let's go to those that have got uh, significant variances. Um, on this slide, uh, still under program two, sustainable resources, sustainable resource use and management, uh, the indicator 241. Initially, we targeted that we will have just one awareness uh, campaign um, in relation to disaster reduction. We managed to do eight uh, because of the, the collaboration and assistance that the, the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations as, as part of their uh, global program to um, minimize the or to create awareness um, and, and increase the readiness on the producer side in terms of um, the, the disasters. And the other variance was on 2.4.4, a uh, number of farmers assisted through disaster relief schemes. Uh, the similar intervention also uh, saw us uh, increasing the number of uh, the participants, uh, two and three instead of 200. Next slide. Under farmer producer support, uh, which is program three, agriculture producer support and development, the difference, the variance uh, on indicator 3.1.1, which is number of smallholder producers supported, we have overachieved because um, during the quarter under review, the, uh, we, we had the contractors who um, those who could not deliver in the previous financial year, especially quarter four of 2021-22, um, who then were able to, uh, you know, um, increase their deliveries. And that is why we were able to um, overachieve on this particular indicator. Um, similarly, with the uh, indicator 312, number of subsistence producers supported, our indicator was 142. We managed to reach out to 1,483 uh, farmers. And this is because of the, uh, the program on the Presidential Employment Stimulus Package Initiative um, as part of the uh, agricultural you know, disaster relief um, in response to COVID-19. And when we look at indicator 3.1.3, uh, which is number of producers supported uh, specifically on cotton commodity. Uh, we had one and we couldn't uh, support them uh, because of the, you know, the IT related um, challenges, the, the acquisition of the webinar tools through the extension recovery program as per the service delivery protocol was not yet concluded at the end of the quarter. And that is why uh, we couldn't manage to uh, provide that particular support. And this also uh, was applicable to indicator 314 um, in terms of the citrus commodity, 315 um, in terms of the red meat commodity. Next slide. The Indicator on producer supported uh, with grain as well. Um, it was affected by the similar challenge. Uh, I'll skip that and then move to indicator 317, which is number of farmers trained through CASP. The initial target was 150. We managed to um, train 262. And this was made possible uh, because the additional farmers were trained in response to a critical need of farmers to 
comply with the water rights um, re regulations. We, we've got a challenge, um, honorable members. I think we, we will touch on maybe as we discuss the report, uh, the whole issues of the water rights, uh, wherein our, you know, especially previously disadvantaged farmers are really find it difficult um, to uh, get the, the licenses. And this is also compounded by uh, the challenges, uh, much as <clears throat> the turnaround time has been reduced to uh, uh, 90 days, but uh, there are still some you know, processes that need to be adhered to. And we are hoping also that uh, with the uh, today's interaction uh, between the Minister of Water and Sanitation and the Provincial Administration, we are hoping that uh, there could be some you know, um, uh, possible solutions to um, these challenges. Um, the number of mentorship programs that we facilitated, uh, initially there was no target, but we managed to achieve three, because three farmers um, in Skukune district requested to be uh, subjected to the mentorship on grain production. And uh, the department uh, assisted as, as per the request of the farmers. Um, the underperformance under 319, a number of unemployed graduates, the challenge was that uh, because we thought that when the quarter ended, um, we should have already placed the 120, but that was not possible. We could only manage to place eight uh, due to a fact that um, uh, there were still some processes uh, which included the personnel suitability checks, which could not be finalized um, as speedily as we had expected. And uh, we therefore, you know, um, only managed to do eight. But we can confidently indicate that uh, uh, since then there has been some progress. And uh, I think we will be able to report that also in the uh, quarter two. Um, with regard to the, let's go to the next slide. Um, indicator on number of producers access, accessing pharma production support units, uh, services, the target was 100. We couldn't do any because we were targeting that um, once the flaze boom, FPSU gets operational, it has been completed. Uh, everything is in place. The only challenge is the finalization of the connectivity uh, of the electricity uh, through the ESCOM. And um, it wasn't done or it wasn't completed when the quarter ended. And that is why uh, we couldn't have the farmers um, starting to started to access the services. But the interactions with ESCOM um, is continuing through our uh, provincial shared services um, center in the in the province. And we are hopeful that uh, uh, with the progress, because already currently uh, they are on site trying to sort out the uh, connections, and we are hoping that we should be able to get the farmers receiving support um, as expected. With regard to um, 312, um, the number of stakeholder engagements facilitated, the, the target was one. We managed to do three because a need arose for engagements with Hereford farmers uh, as well as the Zvidela citrus revitalization, which led to an overarchment of the target. This was mainly around the whole issue of institutionalization. Um, 313, farmers mobilization sessions facilitated. The target was one. We managed to do two, um, also because of the engagement that we had with the Hereford farmers. Let's go to the next slide quickly. On this slide, um, honorable chairperson and uh, honorable members, the variance is only under 325 which is number of producers capacitated through demonstrations. The target was 704. We, we could only manage to do 348 because less producers were able to attend demonstration to their involvement with other activities um, when we checked uh, that involved the winter cropping. Um, the other variance, major variance was on 327, the number of designated producers supported through empowerment initiatives. The target was 15. Um, the, we couldn't do any because the youth in Daba that we had planned 
for the month of June in particular had to be postponed uh, in response to the announcement when we the country moved to risk adjusted level four then we had to then discontinue and we can assure the honorable members that uh, we after the uh, the movement to level three we managed to do that um, actually during the HOD, you have disappeared. You are no longer you are no longer with us. Will you please come back? HOD, um, I can, can you hear me, Chairperson? Yes, you are back now. Yes, I can. Thank you. Thanks very much. Um, I was trying to co- to check if they can hear me because I requested to move to slide number the next slide, which is slide fourteen. Uh, let's keep this one because there's no variance. Let's go to program four, which is veterinary services. The variances here, honorable chairperson and members, is under indicator 411. Um, the target was 228. We managed to do 665 um, because the samples um, that we had targeted to collect, we had to do more because um, we needed to determine the extent of the disease after the occurrence of the FMD outbreak in the areas of Vembe and Mopani district uh, during quarter four of 2020-2021. And the, 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 the measures that we put in place um, is to just to indicate that samples are being, co- are, are being collected according to the prevailing risk and in line with the targeted disease surveillance schedule. Um, the underachievement was recorded for indicator 412, which is number of visits to epidemiological units for veterinary interventions. We did less uh, because of the the less requests that we had received and we responded according to those requests as uh, they are received. Next slide. On indicator 413, uh, deep sessions on communal cattle, the target was 940. We managed to do only 420. Um, it, 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 it was worrying because we had a low turn up from the farmers uh, from, for the deeping of cattle in, in particular. And we are saying we are continuing to advise and encourage the farmers to deep uh, the cattle um, in the main as part of the diseases and parasite control. With regard to FMD vaccination sessions conducted, we managed to only do 23 instead of 74. The reason being that um, the outbreaks in Mopani and Wembe uh, necessitated more vaccinations at additional deeping tanks during quarter four of 2020-2021. And therefore, we had less vaccination sessions that we had to conduct in the in the quarter under review uh, in line with the vaccination frequency schedule. But we are saying, honorable members, that uh, we will continue to vaccinate in line with the vaccination frequency schedule, uh, especially for FMD, because um, it's one of the diseases that is actually very, very, you know, um, concerning for us as a province, but also nationally. Next slide. Um, indicator 421, um, the target was 530. We managed to do 140 uh, because of the less demand on li- wildlife trophy hunting, which saw lesser number of export certificates issued. Um, I think honorable mem- members will recall that uh, uh, this is largely on the, um, the export of the, you know, um, uh, the, the, the wildlife trophy hunting, you know, products. Next slide. Number of inspections conducted on facilities producing meat. We targeted 120. We managed to do 88. Uh, less abattoirs were registered during 2021. Uh, less than what was anticipated, and that is why we managed to. Uh, only do 88. 
and basically we are saying that uh, this 88 is all that we, we had to you know inspect because we're hoping that um, there will be more that have been registered. Um, let's go to the next slide. Number of laboratory tests performed according to approved standards. The target was 11,900. We managed to do 9,218. Uh, lesser tests required were required than anticipated. And we are saying that we'll continue to do the testing of samples um, submitted by internal and external clients um, in response to you know, the prevailing condition. Next slide. We can jump this one. Let's go to, uh, let's jump program five because there are no variances under program five. Let's move straight to program six, which is agricultural economic services. The only variance here uh, is it was recorded under 612, uh, number of clients supported with production economic services. Uh, we did 606 in, instead of 500 uh, because additional support was provided because of an increased number of farmers supplying, uh, applying, um, my apology, for COVID-19 relief funds. So those farmers had to be assisted and that is why we managed to do more. Let's move over to the next slide and skip this one. Let's go to Ndatemakula where there are variances. Um, number of economic reports compiled, we overachieved in 18 instead of five. Uh, more economic reports were compiled in response to the prevailing conditions and developments in the sector. With regard to program seven, yes, the underachievement was recorded uh, on indicator 721, which is number of participants trained in skills development programs in the sector. We could only manage to do 17 instead of 50 because a lesser number of participants were ab was able to attend training because of the other activities uh, that kept them busy. Next slide. Um, this is just a summary, uh, just uh, highlighting some of the interventions that were made. Um, we, you know, in terms of the conservation agriculture, where we assisted the farmers to put the cover crops, uh, practicing the crop rotation and integration of maize and beans as part of climate uh, smart agriculture. And also just highlighting, um, you know, the, the production activities in terms of the mixed farming with chickens and goats um, in, in Mutumere in the Greater Gyan uh, municipality. Um, I think the next slide also is part of, there was another slide after this, yeah, where in, you know, information sessions and the training programs that were coming acted um, where we indicated that uh, some were possible because of the assistance by the uh, UFAO of the United Nations. Uh, this is also just uh, some highlights in terms of the areas where we intervened uh, in response to the drought relief because of the funding, honorable members, that we, we had received towards the end of the, the last financial year. Uh, which we are still continuing with the implementation. Um, uh, and quarter one was part of the continuation of the, uh, the project, um, as you could see, the, especially the livestock uh, water provision. Um, the next part talks to the budget and expenditure. I'll also try to move with speed in the interest of time. Um, the, 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 we, we, we spent in overall, this is the program summary, honorable chairperson and members uh, from program one, program one up to program seven. In overall, um, under the quarter under review, as at the end of June, uh, our percentage spending, uh, we were at 23.7%. Uh, uh, and the areas highlighted in red chair is where we 
are actually envisaging um, overspending. We are indicating also that uh, because we are supposed to be uh, at a 25 percent, which is a norm for the end of the first quarter, but we managed to go even more than 30 percent. And as you can see, it's mainly under program one, which is administration, uh, program two, sustainable resources management, uh, program four, veterinary services, as well as program five. And we will um, in the highlight uh, also the, uh, the the reasons for this, uh, Honorable Chair, as we move. And also, when we go to economic classification as well, you could say that uh, the compensation of employees is the one that is overheating as well, although it's just above, it's 2% above the norm. Um, but um, what is of concern is on transfers and subsidies, which is 49%. Let's go to the next slide. Um, that was the overall summary, and this slide indicates uh, the performance, the budget performance, just on equitable share allocation. Um, it, it, it actually even changes the, the picture, because if it wasn't for conditional grant, uh, this is the picture that uh, we would be, you know, living with. Um, still, again, you know, under administration, the concerns there, uh, prog- Program two, sustainable resource management, uh, veterinary services, as well as um, uh, technology research and development. And here also, as we look at economic classification, the compensation of employees, um, 26%, uh, the 25.6% actually, Goods and services, uh, 31%, and uh, transfers and subsidies is even more with uh, 60%. And in overall, that takes us to 26.4% um, budget expenditure as at the end of the first quarter. Next slide. Then when we look at uh, conditional grants, um, the, the only concern is on the EPWP, the, the overspending thereof, and uh, this is largely also to the, the accruals um, that we experienced um, that, uh, you know, spilled over into the first quarter of the quarter under review. But when we look at uh, the, the cusp, cusp, we still low. Um, we'll share the reasons later in the presentation. The program of Legema, we are doing quite well, although we're just uh, maybe 6% below the norm, but I think um, it's not uh, any concern for worry. The challenge with land care, as I've already alluded to, we're still at 3.6% because we haven't really started with the implementation. And uh, the overall conditional grants performance uh, at the end of the quarter, we were at 13.8%. And as you can see also in terms of the breakdown of economic classification, um, the COE, um, you know, still, it's not a worry. We're still doing well, although a little bit below the norm um, as compared to the uh, equitable share part. Next slide. This is just a a narrative um, on what we had just uh, indicated. I will not repeat that. The issue of land care is still concerning, but we are hoping that uh, with continuous engagement uh, at the national level, the the only challenge that we are going to have is if then the approvals come very, very late um, in the the financial year, because that will imply that uh, we may not be able to spend the the budget uh, as uh, as alluded. And also the impact, obviously, will be, you know, the projects that would have. Uh, implemented uh, as part of our planned service delivery. I think we can, with with a disaster, um, Honorable Chair, as I indicated, um, we we received the money uh, later uh, in the in the financial year, the previous financial year, and as a result, we had to continue with the implementation of the disaster relief project. We requested the rollover uh, through our provincial treasurer, of course, and the indications are that although we have not received the, uh, the approval letter as yet, but the, we did 
have a confirmation that the rollover has been approved and uh, therefore we should be able to then conclude the, 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 the project. But um, nonetheless, we just continue to implement and in terms of the payments, we made arrangements to draw that from other uh, sources of funding uh, in the main equitable share allocation. Let's go to the next slide. Um, here, Honourable Chair and Members, we are, we are just indicating uh, the, the budget reduction risk or the impact to service delivery. And I think we will continue to you know, share this with um, our, the members of our portfolio committee. Because, um, the, and I think it's a well-known fact that the, the budget reductions, um, they, they had a, a you know, sort of impact, a negative impact on, 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 on the plans uh, that we, we had. And we're just indicating, you know, some that, uh, you know, for instance, the reduced budget on COE, we, where we are sitting, we, we can't just move, we, we we are constrained, we can just do, as people go, we can replace, you know. Um, and uh, as a result, the impact thereof is that um, the capacity for the department to implement um, has been drastically, drastically affected. Um, to, of course, um, when you look at also parts of, as part of the goods and services, the whole issue of traveling for services, um, I think, Honorable Chair, um, in your introductory, you indicated that uh, this department is one of the departments that are more, um, you know, sort of, uh, they are on the ground and they are more um, service delivery oriented and, and for, for farmers to produce, they, they ought to get the necessary advice. Then the issue of traveling, uh, if the traveling is constrained, that is, is even, you know, felt much more. Classical example, um, you know, even the, the whole issue of veterinary services, uh, issues of the vaccinations, we had to even reprioritize from, from the little that we have so that we can make provision for veterinary staff, you know, to move around, you know, do the vaccinations, conduct the follow-up visits, you know, to the farmers to make sure that uh, we, we try and keep, you know, the, the, uh, the, the spread. Um, it's just that, unfortunately, for other various reasons, we, we don't have the, the challenges here and there, but uh, we're trying just to live with, with what we have, and it has proven that it is really, really difficult. Um, the, the issue of the old infrastructure revitalization, um, it, 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 I think for some of the honorable members that have been to some of our offices in the in the in the uh, local agricultural areas, even the service centers. The condition, they're just so dilapidated. The condition is that such that they're not, you know, repeatable. Um, and, 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 and for the fact that they can't be renovated, there's not much that we can do. Um, and what we're saying, we'll also explore other means so that we um, you know, try to still reach out to the, to the farmers. And, and, and the challenge that we usually experience, um, we, our clients in the main are those that uh, do not have um, the latest IT resources, uh, the issue of access as well. So, you know, the, 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 the advancement of technology also sometimes becomes, becomes a challenge. But we, we, we are saying, Honorable Mans, we are not complaining, we're just sharing, you know, uh, these challenges so that uh, there could also be appreciation of what we are going through so that uh, uh, we can also solicit, you know, support from, from yourselves. Um, I think the, the next slide should be the thank you slide, honorable uh, members. I think this is the last slide. Thanks very much, honorable chair, um, for the opportunity. Um, honorable members, it looks like the chair is still muted. Thank you, honorable MEC and the HOT for the presentation.
And when I look to my time, we still have some time that we can engage. I'm going to allow the honorable members to engage. But before they engage, honorable MEC, as the portfolio committee, we have sent 12 questions to the department. I'm just going to hint a few of those questions which we have sent. What are they contained inside? The questions we're speaking about, the very same contractors, you said they are delaying. And why the delay? The other issue is the webinar. Because the COVID-19 pandemic, it's not starting 2021. We have been uh, moving from one level to another level from uh, 2020. So what made the department not to prepare fully so for the webinar? because we know the webinar is the most important tool with the fourth industrial revolution right now. The other thing, Honorable MEC, is the issue of a water rights department. Way back since 2009, until now, the farmers are still experiencing the same problem on the issue of water rights. What is it? Where is the bottleneck? As the portfolio committee, if we can just allude to us, why is the bottleneck so that we can see what will be the next step to take? Because at the end of the day, there's no farming without water rights and water. I'm going to give this opportunity to the members to engage with the report, the summary which has been presented to us. Those are a few things, Honorable MEC, uh, even the, the, the arbitral because it's not touched here. Uh, it's a uh, abattoir for us as Limpopo people. I think the public would be buying meat at the lesser price, especially that we are the most rural and the previously disadvantaged province. At this moment, if the, that abattoir can uh, be functional and those... Um, because you are applying the triple P, uh, which is private uh, public partnership. Uh, if the partner who is coming, who is going to do the work, would be somebody who is from uh, the Limpopo province. Because it's unfortunate that more farmers who can assist in the 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 the, 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 the white meat, especially the abattoir at Lwahom. There are many in Limpopo. I don't think we should have suffered so much uh, or we can get people who can assist us. Uh, honorable members, I'm giving you the opportunity to engage with the report. Thank you. Honorable members, Honorable Sishoka. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, thanks very much. Uh, thanks for the opportunity and uh, good morning to the MEC and the staff of and the management of the department. Let me take also this opportunity to welcome the report as presented. However, I'm going to raise a few issues that need the attention before we fully accept it. One, I think if you look at, um, this time around, I think I'll just go on the report straight on the report itself, because one could see that this report, even when we made submissions in the, in the previous meetings to look at this report, the department seems to be repeating more or less the same mistakes that we might have raised with them. Number one, if you look at the overall performance of the department, this quarter is 77% according to the report. And of concern is that the weakest is program three, which is agricultural project support and development, which is sitting at 67. It becomes a worry because that is the core of the department. And if it's lagging behind, it actually drags the whole department low. So it is of concern. And also veterinary, but the explanation by the by the HOD, I think it suffice enough, it's understandable, it's, and it's accepted to say that majority of the indicators are uh, demand-driven. Therefore, you cannot actually fault them to say they did not perform per se. If, if there is no demand, there is little that you could do about it. 
But also, what also becomes a worry is also program, uh, I think it's number seven, the agricultural uh, education and training, which is sitting at 50%. These three programs are worrisome, and I think they need to to be taken, I mean, looked at uh, in the next, and so that, because they are the ones that are dragging um, uh, the performance of the department in this quarter, and where's their core in their nature. So they need to be looked at. But let me go to uh, program two, as presented, on the number of environmental control production structures you targeted four, you only achieved one. And the reason you are giving us is that there is a delay by the contractor, which to some extent is, it is acceptable. But what worries me is when you give the corrective measures, the corrective measures we are giving MEC and HOD uh, are definitely not acceptable. We cannot accept those as corrective measures because you are actually repeating what is expected of you to do. And this gives us an indication that the reason why there is a delay by the contractor to finish these projects is because you are not doing this because you think it is a corrective measure, well, it's something that you should be doing. I mean, all the things that you have listed there under corrective measures, those are obligations from the department. We expect the department to do them. In actual fact, what we expect from you as corrective measures is to identify the problem and tell us how are you going to deal with the problem? But the way you have alerted, alerted is totally not going to be accepted. We need to look at those measures and quantitative measures and see what is that we, do, we could do. We can't be mentioning that would 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 meet with the contractor and uh, and follow up and and all do those sort of things. It it is not acceptable. Uh, Honourable Chair, I think the department needs to revisit this quantitative measure so that we are able to deal with it uh, correctly. And 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 uh, problem three, yes, I think we've hinted on the uh, the tool that is needed for training. And uh, what what worries me? It it worries me because you are saying the reason for deviation from three point one point three up to three point one up to six, the one that talks to the whenever tool kit. You are saying the problem is. Accusation. That is the problem of deviation. You could not get that. An accusation, I think it has to do with procuring the tool. And that sits uh, here and but what you should be telling us, what is leading to this accusation, this delay of not accusing uh, procuring it? That should be the problem, so that we're able to deal with the problem. Because if you are going to list this as a problem, accusation as a problem. The quality measures will never assist us. The quality measures will never assist us. Because even when you read it, it, it talks about your quality measures not even talking to your problem, which is accusation of the tool. It talks to the training that you, you are going to train and all this. It, there is no correlation between the two. So, and that is why, as a result, uh, Chair, we are going to have a department that has got target and they are not going to be achieved. Why? Because we do a diagnosis and we are giving the wrong uh, remedial action to address those problems. And as a result, I think this one as well, 3.1, 3.1.3 up to 3.2 needs to be revisited and, uh, and, and properly put and give us the reasons. What is the problem with accusation of these money by tools? And what is it that you're going to do? What is the problem? Because you can't be telling us if the problem is at a stage of uh, procuring or you've got problem with the bidders. So we need to understand those things, but it can't be general. And, and then you give us a, another corrective measure that are not uh, acceptable. And also on 3.7, 3.7, uh, 3.1, 3.2, where you talk about the water rights, you could not achieve certain things because uh, there was, I mean, you have overachieved because there was a critical need for, there was a critical need for, of, for farmers to comply with the water rights. And the question that comes to my mind is, what informed the critical need in the first court? 
what is it that made the farmers to go all out and say, in this quarter, and remember, like you referenced, said, we have been sitting with the problem of water rights for a longer time. Why in this quarter is becoming a critical something? As a result, it makes farmers to come in numbers because they, they, want, they, 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 they need the water rights. Um, and also, the, 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 the corrective measure as well, it does not talk to, it does not talk to your, uh, your, your, your problem. I think we need to, to relook at this MEC and make sure that we, we correct those things and then so that the portfolio committee could fully accept the report, the report. Because in this format, if we were to accept that, it would definitely play, I mean, put a very uh, dark uh, picture on the portfolio itself because we seem to have not to be, you know, take, I mean, put in, de in details what, what has been presented to us. Um, MEC, I think uh, on, 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 on 3.1.9, number of farmers, number, number of unemployed graduates maintained or uh, on agriculture enterprise for progress skills. I'm, 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 really, I'm really disappointed with this one. I'm, I'm definitely disappointed because the reason that you are advising there we once discouraged this problem. We once discouraged, I think, in the past sittings to say, you ought as the department, look at the process flow. And in cases where you are going to depend on other departments to do certain things, your planning should direct at least a little bit in advance so that you do not have to wait until this. Look, you are now sitting, and the department now are sitting with a target of 120 and only eight are have been appointed in the first quarter. That is decimally failing. And look, it deals with the critical key role of, uh, you know, assisting those graduates. Out of 120, we are sitting with eight that in the first quarter, and that 100 was our target. It 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 is it does not give a very good picture. It tells us that even when we give input and advices to this department as a portfolio committee. There are those that are going to undermine these advices and they will continue as business. And this is why today we're sitting with this. And as a result, uh, Chair, I will definitely request that um, the, the, the HOD and the MEC must directly look at this thing and, and look at, and especially the MEC, there should be a consequence management for this underachievement in the first quarter. Because I'm saying this because if you fail in the first quarter, this has got a serious impact for the whole year. This, it might mean that the program is going to prolong to the next financial year, and that has got financial implications. And yet we're sitting with people that they should plan and make sure that they plan properly for the department. So they should, Chairperson, we should get a report which is also telling us what are the measures that were taken, especially against the HOD and the general manager responsible for HR, which is responsible for this? Because we have advised as the portfolio committee in the past that certain things must be done well in advance so that you give other departments enough space. You don't have to go on the, on the 11th hour and say, we want this thing. And then look what we're sitting now. We're sitting with this problem. It's a serious problem. I suggest the chair that we need to get a report, and that report must also talk to consequence management, to the accounting officer, which is the HOD, and also the general manager responsible for HR. On 3.1.11, number of uh, producer uh, accessing your farmer producer support unit services. Uh, you, you're targeting hundreds, uh, of those producers and nothing has been achieved. And the reason for deviation, it is not really acceptable because the reason you are only telling us that it is the problem of connection of electricity. That cannot be a reason. We need to know what led to that failure to connect so that we're able to come with proper. And, and, and to show, Chair, that these reasons are not enough, you would also look at the corrective measures. The corrective measures, as a result, are just not assist, are not going to assist us. Because the corrective measures now, they are only talking to only facilitations. 
we're going to facilitate we're going to facilitate the talks with ESCOM and that it ends there. So the likelihood is that if you do not do a thorough analysis and you're not giving us the problem, the serious problem, you're going to sit with the problem for a longer time. And that that worries us. It, it, it really worries us because we're not going to move as a department. And come the second quarter, we'll be sitting with the same problem. And on uh, program four, I think the VET, I think it was all explained. The reason I was worried about the 34%, but I think the HOD has managed to explain it. I'm, I'm, I'm very much worried. I'm very much happy. But although the HOD, I'm worried about your, your performance vis-a-vis -vis the expenditure. If you look at the normal expenditure, is you, you, it, you would expect to be around 25%, but you're sitting at 31% of your expenditure under this program, and which is 6.3% 6 above the normal expenditure. Maybe you would also touch in your explanation, explain why such, such, such uh, abnormalities, so, so that we get to understand why the expenditure is not talking to your, it's not talking to your, um, the actual performance. On program number seven, which I think is the last one, the number of uh, 7.2.1, number of participants trained in skills and development program in this sector. Uh, you were targeting 50, you achieved 17. The, the reason for, for, for deviation is not causing at all. Because when you plan, you should definitely HOD consider that Winter, crop, winter cropping is a season that is given. You can't, you, when, when, you, when you do your own planning, surely that should come handy. But if you today are going to say we're unable to achieve because of winter cropping, as if it was something that came without you knowing, it tells us something else. The planning was not proper. And therefore, the reason is either two, there are two things. It's either the planning was not proper or we must get the proper reasons why we should, why, why there was such a low uh, underperformance on that. And also the corrective measure, if you look at it, HOD, it does not talk to this. It, it does not talk to the, the problem that, that has been alluded to. And MEC, if, 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 if MEC, you're not going to, you're not going to, to put your hands in this department, you're going to be stuck. You're going to be stuck with work that, or with targets that are not going to be achieved, and we're going to be given reasons that will continuously reject. Because now once on, we are not going to to accept any reason that is not acceptable, and that would actually have a serious implication on your MEC because you seem not to be. I don't know, but from where I'm sitting, you seem not to be hands on. How do these things come and they are reported? How do reports come? We have the, the chairperson is alluded. There are questions that we have raised, we have raised with you, but they are not coming. And you seem not to be shaking. You seem not to be worried about those and everything. The HOD must have. So if you are not going to do this, surely you are going to be sitting with with reports that are not going to be accepted by this portfolio committee. As a result, that will have a serious implication on you, chairperson. Thanks. That's my submission. Thank you. Thank you, honourable Sushoka. Honourable Smale. I see your hand up. Honorable Smiley. Sorry, I was just trying to take myself on it. Um, sorry, Honorable Chairperson. Um, good, uh, good day to the department and to everybody that's involved in the session. Chairperson, I think um, for me it is about that we give greater um, uh, uh, or, the, or that there's greater understanding about the risk that the department is facing uh, towards the backdrop of a reduced budget and the conditions that are facing. And I do think that um, we maybe sometimes do not go into much greater depth or analysis when we try to analyze to, when we try to understand the risk that the department is facing. So let me just touch on a few things. We saw an overexpenditure on the EPWP grant. We are 142% overexpenditure on the household um, program. 
We fourteen percent um, over expenditure on the administrative um, matters. We are sitting with equitable share that uh, at this given stage we take it for word uh, for for what it is by the HOD, but that there is an underspent in the equitable grant section. And I'm not so sure where we are sitting with those programs or the number of programs that might be negatively affected, uh, might stand a chance of lo uh, losing those uh, grants or that there might be a need for um, a request for rollovers um, um, at some later stage. And this is just because of the type of reporting that we are sitting with. So when the risk um, uh, uh, section came up, one of the issues uh, that I do think impacts the ability for personnel to, to work under the type of conditions that they want to work and the and and the support that they give to the industry, we hear the issues of this that the department cannot deal with all the infrastructure and the revitalization of um, certain um, issues. Now it's one thing to say it, but I know um, if I if I sit at the portfolio of education. I know that the maintenance backlog is uh, uh, probably around about between four and six uh, billion, and that the infrastructure backlog is probably about 20 billion, and that we spent around about 800, although that the budget is 1.1 billion, we spent around about 800 million rand actually on the infrastructure in, 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 in order to deal with that. And that tells me that we're going to take about two decades to deal with the problem. So I would require, I would ask that um, at some point, MEC um, or HUD, you can maybe give a broad number. But at some point, we start looking at what are the cost analysis needed by the department to deal with the infrastructure backlogs and revitalization programs that is needed. Uh, uh, where are we with our priority list? Because if you look at, uh, if you are going to sit with a massive backlog, how do we prioritize A above B and B above C? And then what are the um, specific timelines that um, is needed? Because part of this portfolio's job is to go into the Limpopo legislature, into the House, and argue very strongly for funding to be made available for a very for a KPI or a program or a department which is responsible which is in the top three when it comes to GDP when it comes to job creations within the province so therefore there must be a a very strong argument being made for certain support and how we deal with that that is that is what I'm I'm seeking for to to deal with. It's not just trying to go after the department, but trying to understand factually how do I support the department and how do we go forward. Chairperson, we talk about triple P partnerships. Triple P partnerships in the space of economic development talks about what is the role of the um, department in those triple T triple P functions. Let's talk about the abattoir. We know that the abattoir cost the um, uh, the department in excess of about hundred million rand, or the government, Limpopo government, in excess of about hundred million rand, and that's without taking into account the interest or a program that has been standing still for about ten years. What is the what is the shareholders agreement between? The department, possibly leader, in this, and what is the oversight mechanism role that um, is going to um, uh, we are going to play in? Um, because um, I I foresee I don't foresee the triple P partner buying uh, the abattoir. I, I'm seeing it as a possibly kickstarting the abattoir to fulfill its role. So therefore there's assets and those assets must be maintained. Those assets must be returned. 
but there's also a specific outcome that the department would like to see. And I would like to um, ask that the department at some point start taking us into confidence on how do we deal with um, or sharing some of these triple P partnership? Um, is it above board? Did we follow due process? Did we abide by the various regulations, the financial regu uh, uh, regulations that governs uh, um, government? Because what I don't want to see is, is that when the program actually kicks off, we deal with maybe some concerns and those concerns could have been avoided by a by a proactive engagement with this committee at some point or another. Um, the agricultural economic um, program had an expenditure of 13%. And, um, but you still managed to complete your KPIs for, or 100% of your KPIs that you measure yourselves for that program. I'm just trying to understand How's it, how does it work that you, you achieve your KPIs, but you still underneath your budget? Um, and just, just maybe it's, uh, maybe it's just the, the, the manner and how we report that it, it will kick in on the second, um, it, it will show better reflection in the second um, quarter. Um, I must also say that I am very concerned about the transfers and then subsidies that are at 49% and then the equitable share at 60%. And um, I don't want to call it fiscal dumping, but fiscal, it, especially around equitable shares and, and the transfers of subsidies, why is it that we've over, uh, over transferred and um, um, should... Uh, um, where we did transfer those bulk sums of funding, are those programs or activities at the at the at the percentage rate where they should be going? Because you might mention that one of the cuts was that it's difficult for the department to travel, and if you cannot travel, that means you cannot do oversight and you cannot do you cannot hold people accountable for their actions. So. What I'm very concerned of is that we start transferring a lot of money to certain programs uh, or groups or whatever they might be, and the necessary oversight um, is maybe not being done. So, is there can 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 the ouch the question then would be um, is efficient oversight being done? at the programs where we do transfer these funds and when we do, do ask for evaluation of those programs that they will meet the minimum standards as required um, for, for us to be able to say that money was well spent. Um, Chairperson, if I go to, uh, and, and I'm sure that, uh, uh, I'm sure that the department must have received, received our, um, our uh, issues that um, the portfolio wanted the department to focus on on some of the key projects within the, um, the, uh, within the department. And um, those were about eight specific key issues. And I've got some subheadings um, that we have done. And without going in too much um, issues, it's uh, the Lebohomo Abattoir, the T Estate, Zabedela, and then they go on um, towards um, some of those issues. Can I ask the department in future reference that if there is some specific issues that it doesn't get confined or hidden away in the report of a APP that has been followed in the, in the issues, that there's a specific section that deals with some of the key requests from the portfolio so that we can quality monitor them. Um, HUD, HUD, we we do take note of jobs created by the department, but our agriculture portfolio is extremely diverse. Diverse in the sense of um, uh, 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 the type of crops that we do, the type of planting, the type of assistance that we do give, and. Um, when we look at jobs created, it would be interesting to see 
in which sectors of um, the agricultural sector we are performing extremely well and which sector of the agricultural sector there are some serious concerns um, um, that are coming up. So we might be doing very well in the white meat industry, maybe in the red meat industry and maybe in the citrus industry, but the other industries um, are lacking. And then um, I'm looking at how do we deal with the um, how do we deal with the assistance of breaking into new markets or assisting um, those industries in the in the new markets? But we can only do that if we know um, what what are the types of industries that are actually performing and what are the actual ones that are not performing? And the jobs that have been created are they? Uh, more of a temporary nature, or are they, or are we being able to create some more long-term um, um, issues around that? So um, those are the type of um, issues that I would like to see um, coming forward. Um, there was still one issue. Um, oh yeah, Chairperson, thank you for um, or, or, or the department for uh, one of the webinars that we held the other day. Around um, around the uh, it, it was the economic portfolio or um, that held the portfolio. But one of the issues that came out that had a direct impact on this portfolio was how do we deal with um, certificates uh, or, or yeah, not certificate um, permits and 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 the issuing out of permits um, in that regard. Can I ask the department how far are we? in trying to go onto an online system in order to assist uh, many of these people um, into um, doing those type of application. Is it is it available? Um, I know that one of um, our province was one of the, the, the very, was one of, if it's not the only one, that we're still doing manually. Um, we were on a, a, a online system, but that was withdrawn due to um, certain mal administration at one stage or another. And I think it's how you manage an online system. It's how you have various levels of approval that um, gives effect to a, a reliable um, online application. So in that regard, I'm just asking, um, is the department um, online with those type of application? If not, what um, uh, um, between the MEC for um, economic development and the MEC for agriculture. Um, what are the type of conversations that are happening in order to assist uh, those um, those individuals? Um, Chairperson, I think in 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 lieu of a way of time and con time constraints, I am sure I'm going to leave that there, and uh, maybe in our casual time also later tonight or whenever we walk from um, oversight to oversight, I'm sure that um, some of these issues would come across. But those are the things that I am just want to um, ask um, uh, um, truly. Uh, and I would want to close when the MEC do um, uh, at some point can report on some of the issues that we ask them to intervene is to properly to try to do proper SWOT analysis on um, on on some of those issues because we Zebedela Citrus Estate might need um, our assistance, but uh, they would require say a hundred million rand to do a X, and the department is not able to assist with a hundred million, but is only is able to assist with a certain aspects thereof. And then we need to try to understand what are those consequences. But before you can assist some of those um, um, issues, that there must be some sort of a MOE between parties. Thank you, Chairperson. I'll leave it there. Thank you, Honorable Smale. Honorable uh, uh, MEC, uh, due to time constraint, we are going to give you the opportunity to respond to all the questions which honorable members has posed after a deliberation on the summary of the first quarter report. Thank you, honorable MEC. And I will ask the, the, the HOD to respond to some of the questions raised by honorable members. Thank you, honorable HOD.
Chairperson, um, honorable and honorable members, thanks once again. Uh, with your indulgence, I think uh, I'll, there, there will be other questions that uh, colleagues will they, they fall directly within the the uh, uh, areas of responsibility um, and the such as finance um, uh, and I think uh, HR related and even veterinary services and uh, uh, but I'll I'll I'll, I'll start with the uh, so maybe maybe let me start by also indicating that we are very very much appreciative of the <clears throat> the input that uh, is being provided and the guidance that the honourable members um, are, are providing, um, particularly on the on the on the on the the, the, the crafting um, of or or <clears throat> the, the need for a proper or further diagnosis of, of, of the, the challenges that the, and the reporting thereof, especially on the, the corrective measures. Uh, that, that point, Chair, we, 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 I think from Honorable Sushoga, we, we have uh, noted it, and uh, indeed we, we will uh, make sure that we, 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 we go back and just reflect um, again on the, because we, we view this as <clears throat> an input for us to, to improve um, in terms of the quality of the of the report uh, to, to the to the members. Um, Honorable Chair, I think uh, the, the, the issue of the water rights, maybe let me start with the, 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 the issue of the water rights and give a <clears throat> a bit of a of a perspective as well. Um, indeed it's, it's a huge challenge that, that we are facing. Um, we meaning uh, ourselves as a department and also even the the, farm, the farmers, especially uh, our previously disadvantaged farmers. And and it's a it's a challenge that has got a history, um, chairperson. Uh, part in that uh, is in two parts. The, 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 there is a that the, in 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 terms of land reform. Um, um, over the years, it, it has been, uh, it has emerged, actually, let me put it that way. It, it has emerged that um, through our land reform programs, uh, I think by omission um, um, internally within ourselves as government, there, there are some pockets of, of the land parcels that have been given out um, to uh, the previously disadvantaged farmers. But then that that allocation did not include water. It did not include water. So the land would be given, and then the water rights, the, the previous owner will still be holding <laughs> the water like, the water rights with. That, that is part of land reform. Now, on the part of the, the developments that are now taking place, let, let's call them the new you know, developments that are, that are taking place. Um, uh, this will then be even on the, the privately the land that has been privately acquired because uh, uh, some of the black farmers they did manage to acquire land on their own you know um, but also in in where the the other farmers are farming on on the the land under traditional authorities communal land under traditional so the the whole issue of the water licensing. Um, it has been a challenge also in the sense that uh, um, the, 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 and, and, and it's a matter that also from the DWS and, and I think colleagues when they edit, they, they will illustrate that uh, we, 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 the, the, there has been the process, the, the application process was taking 364 days, you know, 360 something days, which is almost a year. And it was until now the, the, the state president pronounced on the, 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 the need to reduce the turnaround, the lead period uh, from application to the actual you know, water use authorization and ultimately you know, the, the licensing part. Now, the, 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 the spanner to that, um, honorable chair and members, is that uh, 
as, as we, we interact between ourselves and, and Department of Water and Sanitation, you there the, the are water key, key water catchment areas that are already oversubscribed. In other words, the, the, there's, there's no longer water that or any authorization that can be provided uh, from those uh, water catchment areas. And what needs to happen in that is that because on the other hand, there is a need for new developments. On the other hand, you know, um, there's no more allocations or authorization that because uh, those water catchment areas are over. In other words, for instance, if it's a water from particular source, uh, there could be a license that is issued to draw from there because already there's uh, there's no more water that is left, um, put simply. But, but, but then the, the, from the Department of Water and Sanitation part, uh, they, that is why they introduced the, the water reform program. And it's not a new program. It has been there for, for quite a while, Honorable Chairperson and members, uh, to see how do we... Um, uh, remember at some point, um, the matter even raised in quite a number of, um, you know... Uh, uh, debate and even, you know, um, uh, concerns to say that how, how will it be practical? How is it possible? But what we can say is that uh, we are more reliant uh, from, actually we are depending on that water reform program so that then um, there could be some uh, perhaps, uh, you know, um, following the due processes, I suppose, from DWS in terms of how can then um, uh, that water reform program even then assist and benefit uh, our, our, our smallholder, you know, uh, farmers. That, 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 that is, you know, part of the, 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 the solution that we are. But <clears throat> what, what we can report on lately is that there's a, a memorandum of um, understanding between, at national level, between the National Department of Agriculture, Land Reform and Rural Development and then Department of Water and Sanitation. Uh, Precisely to, to work on these uh, challenges to say how do we then as government departments uh, make sure that we 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 we, we create that enabling environment uh, for uh, the previously disadvantaged farmers to still have access to water for for, for farming. Um, that that, that uh, is is just um, in a nutshell what the problem was and currently what what is it that that is being done and and and. Indeed, yes. Uh, farmers and you know, the, 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 as you can see, the, the, there's new developments, you know, um, all over. But <clears throat> some we had to put on hold uh, for the fact that uh, the water license, um, water licenses have not been issued. And uh, we believe that uh, through that uh, relationship and the memorandum of understanding with the nation, between these two national departments, we should be able to 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 get our farmers assisted. And like I did indicated in passing, we are also hopeful because um, I think today there is an engagement between um, the Honourable Honorable Premier and uh, some of the members of the executive with the Minister of Water and Sanitation to look at, uh, you know, the broader issue of, you know, water for economic development, you know, water also required uh, for, um, you know, as part of the contribution to, you know, uh, basic services at the municipality level. So we believe that uh, through those engagements, uh, we could find maybe um, you know um, quick answers to the challenges that that we are com confronted with. And then <clears throat> quickly on on the Lwakom Abato, Honourable Chairperson, and 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 we 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 what part we we should do also is is the. Uh, uh, I, I, I had and I agree, uh, um, Honorable Smiley, the, the, we, we need to have sort of um, uh, maybe comprehensive report on the Bakum Abato, on Zivijela, and, and several others, just, just to update the members. The Triple P uh, arrangement, in DTS, um, as Honorable members would know, uh, the Abato now is managed, is under the full management of NIDA. And um, indeed, uh, the MEC responsible for the portfolio of agriculture must play an oversight role um, and, and in support of the shareholder, which, which is MEC for, for economic development. Um, the, 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 the shareholders' agreement, of course, the, 
will agree on a model. And the model that was being looked at, especially with the, the age, the country-based old uh, who have since um, uh, withdrawn, they've actually withdrawn. Um, uh, and now leader has started a process. Um, the, the advert was out. And I think it, 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 uh, it's quite some time now. It's just close, I think. Uh, this is identifying um, the other potential investors. The model is that you, the, the investor would, um, would, would come and, and have an agreement with, with the leader uh, to operate. Um, it's on an operational basis. And then um, the, 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 the issue also of um, from the supplier side, and that is where we come in as a department of agriculture, because there's our specific interest also, and I think that is the, the broader objective of why the, the, the abattoir was there, you know, over and above, um, you know, it working and creating jobs, but to create a, a stable market for our farmers, our poultry farmers in the, in the, in the province. And <clears throat> That is where we come. We directly come in to make sure that we provide the necessary support from the production side, and then on the operation side of the abattoir, um, leader then still continues to identify who is the potential investor. Um, you know, because government is not even putting money for under abattoir. We are looking at a situation where the investor will come uh, with the the their own capital. To, to come and operate and uh, then you know go into the agreement with with leader uh, on behalf of, of all of us but i think we we uh, we, we can still provide um, you know um, an, a report and also an update and and for that uh, because we uh, i think periodically we are expected even to report progress to the executive council in terms of um, those processes and i think that progress can still be shared with the, the members of, of this portfolio committee. Um, uh, in, 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 in maybe just on the on the issue of the the, the budget vis a and the CFO will, will the 18 CFO will also come in. The, the some programs are overspend are not spending, but the budget um, um, is 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 uh, is in the red sort of. The, the, when, when we started the year, actually we started the year on 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 a on a on a on a deficit, if I can put it that way, based on the cuts that we had experienced. We started the year on on a deficit in terms of even the 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 COE budget. Um, the budget that we were given uh, was not; uh, it was less than even the womb bodies that 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 we have, um, and also the budget that we have given was even less than um, what we need for us to deal with the, what we call the, um, the, the, uh, the, the obligations, um, issues of you know, maybe, for instance, the rentals, issues of the, you know, the, con the security contracts that are there and, and, and so forth. But I think the, the 18 CFO can, can elaborate on, 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 on that. Um, let, let me pause here, uh, Honorable Chairperson, and, and allow colleagues just to quickly come in so that we don't take much time of interference. Thank you. Thank you, HOD. Uh, before your colleagues uh, engage or give us a um, clear picture of what is taking place, can, can, can I say, uh, Honorable Smiley, Honorable Smiley, I see your hand up. Is it an old hand or it's a new hand? Honorable Smale, I think it's an old hand. You can continue. Thank you. It should be. Managers can continue. I think it's an old hand from Honor Honorable Smale. Um, yeah. oh. Yes, let, let them continue. I think it's an old hand. Okay. No, thanks very much, Honorable Chairperson. I think the I see the 18 CFO's hand is is up. Paswane, Mr. Paswane. Um. Uh, good morning, uh, Honorable Members of the Portfolio, and good morning, um, Honorable MEC and and colleagues. 
Let me just deal with some uh, the few issues in relation to to, to finance that has been uh, actually raised. Um, one thing is that one acknowledges the issues that has been raised, and we really appreciate that because that actually assists us to actually now to the line and follow the direction at which we are supposed to be. Um, one is that looking at the the trend of spending in the first quarter, which um, already reflects uh, that the the department is actually now, um, I would say, uh, above the norm of um, of 25, focusing more on the equitable share, because this is the money that we know that actually now it also belongs to us. And then we have, if not um, uh, monitored uh, closely, then the department may actually enter overspending. And then at the back of our mind, we're also taking into consideration that we do have conditional grants, which are actually money that are coming from the national department for that uh, specific uh, purpose of which it's supposed to be done by by the department. Now, the, the red lines that are actually reflected in there on the spending, uh, I think the, the, the first speaker um, um, from the portfolio committee acknowledged the issue that we have actually um, about 500 million has actually been taken from from the department. So now the the major cost drivers within the department being one the the compensation of employees. Then you also have the contractual obligations, and those are the two um, major cost drivers that are currently now. Um, reflecting as the one that are actually causing all the red lines that we are actually now seeing as we speak of now. And as the department, we have already sit down and start uh, prioritizing and looking at some of the the programs that needs to be um, put on hold for now so that we shouldn't have an unauthorized expenditure come the end of, of the financial year. Now, specific questions have been raised in relation to one transfers and subsidies that is actually now recording out 60 percent, which is way, um, way above the normal. It's actually at an abnormal rate in terms of spending. But what I want to bring to the attention of the, the committee um, the members is that the, the department is actually seeing a high rate of people that are actually now living, retiring. Um, well, of course, you also have those who actually um, it's due to just natural uh, attrition. So, but there's a high volume of people who are actually leaving the department. And as and when they leave, we were actually now supposed to pay what we call the leave graduity. And that is actually now what is exhausting our transfer and subsidy funds. And I want to say it um, very clear to all the members that we have not transferred money to to the organization now. We we have the the DBSA, and as we speak of now, there's no money that I could say in the current financial that has been transferred. But that money, it is still within the, the department. So the challenges that we're actually now experiencing is the people that are currently by leaving the department. I know we once even had a meeting as, as the executive in order to say how best can we deal with it. And we realized that we we do not have a proper solution that we could say that is still aligned to to the laws, wherein you would say maybe we should request some of them to stay a little bit for those who are leaving maybe before the age of 60. But we said we, it's, it's not going to be possible because that will be against um, the, the law. Now, that is actually the situation that the department is actually now finding itself in when it comes to the issues in terms of uh, transfers and, and, and subsidy. Now, one question was to say, how do you now link the, the, the performance versus the, the budget performance? Non-financial versus the financial performance. It is true that when we look at it in terms of what hasn't been achieved, and where we are in terms of uh, of spending. Now, the the challenge that we found ourselves in was that in terms of the, the non-performance, there are some of the activities that would need then you should have 
a, a labor intensive in terms of trying to uh, perform such. And some will then actually need what we call it a, a, a machine intensive in order to, to achieve that. So the department in, in that instance is we are trying at all costs to make sure that our our non-performance versus the financial the financial performance needs to start talking to each other. If you look at program one, that which actually reflects the hundred percent on the other side, and also the, the the program two, which then actually reflects that part that we haven't the actual achieved all the our our targets as actually been um, supposed to be uh, achieved. Now, the challenge that we have then that is that some of the uh, issues that needs to be done, it's through the conditional grants, which is then also in, in program two. And now we have this challenge that we, we in terms of the business plan that hasn't been um, 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 approved now from the national, which then obviously has an impact in terms of what we are supposed uh, uh, to do um, as a department. Now, one of the issues now, which has come out clear in terms of if we take the other economic classifications, your goods and services, your capex, and then your transfers, one of the issues that we have realized that the department is now actually even facing is in terms of dealing with the current uh, staff that are here. The current staff versus the budget that we have uh, currently, it is not actually now talking to each other. We we're spending more on a, on a goods and save, on, on a comparison of employee budget because we do not have enough budget. And what needs to be taken into consideration is that we we haven't employed in the current uh, financial year. So in essence, it says that we we need some additional funding under compensation of of employees, not to service new posts that is still to be filled, but only to service the current crop. So this is the budget which is actually being fenced. And we cannot, where we are now, we cannot top it up, even if we identify funds any anywhere. So that on its own, it actually is seriously affecting how the expenditure actually reflects uh, as we speak of now. And and that is actually now causing the, the red that we are we are seeing as a as a reflection of the spending as we speak of now. One of the issues that has been touched on uh, also by members was in terms of the priority uh, project, in terms of the progress. We, we acknowledge that, that uh, as a department, then we haven't uh, been doing good in terms of our, our planning, in terms of the, the priority project. But the issue more was that uh, prior to the beginning of the financial year, we were not yet so sure in terms of the, the final allocation because these are the funds that we actually received from, from a, a provincial treasury. So immediately when such has been confirmed, that's where now the department has to start with the portion of the, the documentation in terms of feasibility study. That has actually been, uh, been undertaken. But the, the, the process for us to actually start implementing part of it and utilizing the funds that has been uh, allocated for all those uh, pro um, uh, priority projects. It is currently um, um, underway, as we speak of now. What we acknowledge is the delay that we have actually um, um, encountered at the beginning of, of the financial year. But now currently we're trying to move with speed uh, so that we can start implementing some of this project. Of course, we cannot guarantee that uh, we may finalize this in the current financial year then it will actually now be finalized in the next financial year. Because our intention is that as much as we, we continue doing all the programs that we're doing, we need to guard against any irregularities as and when we implement such a, such programs, because we don't want that uh, to come back to and haunt um, uh, the department. I think one of the issues that has been raised was in terms of the cost analysis when we have to look at the the backlog in terms of in terms of maintenance, um, what I can uh, say to the members is that as a on the project oversight committee, we have already started looking at that and to say how much that it will cost us, and at the same time how much do we have? Will we be able to do this uh, in one current financial year, or will then actually have to start um, uh, selecting? or prioritizing the maintenance in line with 
the issues that will need an immediate uh, intervention. So those are the issues that we've actually tried to to address and looking at the funds that is available uh, currently within the the department. So I think that's uh, in essence, I think those are the issues that I felt that we need to provide uh, clarity now. And at the same time, some of the issues that have been raised will actually try and make sure that uh, such things are actually being covered in our next um, uh, reporting or provide an information in a written format as and when um, we actually now engage with the with the portfolio committee. I think based on that, uh, Honorable MEC and, and, and members of the portfolio committee and HOD and colleagues, I thank you. Uh, Mr. Mashiani. Uh, th thank you. Thank you, uh, honorable members of the portfolio committee, our honorable MEC, HOD, and colleagues. I, I think I will just deal with some of the, the indicators where the reasons were like might make this to be rejected, but maybe giving a, a clear a background to it, it might help a lot that uh, our honorable members of the portfolio committee can then be able to to, to understand those reasons. Uh, I'm looking at this one where there is an overachievement in terms of uh, training capacity building for our farmers, which is 3.1.7. When we look at that indicator, it is an overachievement. Uh, and we are saying the result of that overachievement as my HOD has already covered a lot of things on water rights. It comes about as a result of uh, a new trend that came up in from uh, uh, our, our our national office, uh, where in uh, our, our 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 conditional grants are being governed, and uh, and 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 it was clear that uh, there is a challenge where in any form of support that you are going to give to to farmers, even if, even the, the the backyard to to that extent, you need to get some form of authorization. And now this was an outcry. It's a big outcry from our 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 our, our farmers that we are supposed to support. And then we as a department, and I think if we we, we reflect back, uh, honourable uh, members of portfolio committee will understand that we haven't just started it in this first quarter. This has been done even in the previous. Uh, uh, reports. If you, you 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 reflect back to quite a number of reports, especially on this issue, we have been consistently saying we are definitely going on an aggressive awareness and training together, even with DWS, to ensure that our people understand that there is a need for them to acquire this. And you will understand the background of uh, most of our previously disadvantaged uh, small farmers and so forth, that they need to be educated and you know the application is online. That is why we, we went on an aggressive way of dealing with it. And uh, that is why it's an overachievement. And if you look at the, it, it's, not, it's not much of a corrective measure, but it's the reporting format says to us, even if it's an overachievement, come up with a remedial measure. That's why we are saying that clearly that we will continue because it's a drive that we are working on to continuously educate our people, help them, train them on how to apply so that uh, when we are supposed to give them support and even those that we previously give gave support, accordingly, in, in terms of the act, they are supposed to have this or authorizations. And it is our duty, therefore, as farmer support and development to continue assisting them to get this, uh, this water uh, use uh, uh, rights. And, and, and hence, we are even saying consistently, we are going to continue doing that. And then you will realize that uh, we would have had a target. And now given these particular challenges that are there in the APP, you have to go on a, an aggressive drive. And, and that, that would result in by and large, a, 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 an overachievement in that area. And I think it, it's important that we raise this so that uh, the honorable members should understand that uh, it's, a, it's, 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 it's an overachievement, which is as a result of our good effort and innovation to try and make sure that our people get assisted and they get these water rights. And then let me quickly also go into the, the issue of FPSU. 
this background is important for honorable members to understand that yes we did underachieve on the our farmers accessing this if you look at this whole agri parks model the fpsu is the first component wherein we are working together with the the the, 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 DAR, the department of agriculture uh, land reform and rural development and, uh, and their responsibility in this regard is to put fully fleshed infrastructure and make sure that the, the F FPSU is working. Our duty is to ensure that the farmers, because we we, we, we we doing farmer supported development, the farmers are accessing these FPSUs and it is from that point where in we will even begin to be centrally, be able to assist them with production inputs, be able to assist them with technical information that they need, will be able to also make sure that those FPSUs do exactly what they purport to do, amongst others, is to be a collecting center for the produce of the farmers within a specific radius within that FPSU. And when they have produced, that those come in and now we are creating markets for them. And that's where we come in. But now, unfortunately, uh, our sister company, uh, I, mean, I mean, department, uh, DART, they had specific delays and uh, we cannot continue talking about the challenges we had from uh, the, the COVID and so forth, but you, you'll understand that most of infrastructures were highly affected. And that is why they, they could not operationalize this on time. And that's where now we are saying, we continue facilitating, working together with them to ensure that they operationalize this. And as soon as this has been done, then that is when our farmers will begin to access this one, and that is when we'll be reporting on this one. And uh, suffice to say, so far with the flesh boom, I think we have indicated in there that the only thing that was left out for that to be fully operationalized was the, the connectivity in terms of electricity. And I think ESCOM is at an advanced stage, and we even went to the point of calling our the, the, uh, 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 colleagues in the DART department to come and present to our MEC and HOD so that they give them a, a clear update, you know, the heads up in terms of how far are we. And we were all excited to realize that ESCOM has already started doing that. And I believe going into the second quarter, our farmers will be then able to access this, uh, this, uh, the, 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 this facilities. So there are two indicators that are closely related to the operationalization of the FPSU in terms of mobilization, in terms of the, the farmers accessing. Hence, we are saying it might be important for us to explain to the honorable members as to uh, uh, why do we put reasons like that. And when you look at it, it will be clear that uh, uh, in our case is the farmers accessing and we need to assist them. But we could not if it's not operationalized. But because we are coordinating and working together with the other department. We believe going forward, some of these things will be dealt with and the operationalization will take place and the farmers will access that. Thank you very much, Chairperson, and uh, thank you very much, honorable members and, uh, and, and colleagues and our honorable MEC and HOD. Thank you. Uh, honor, uh, um, Mr. Mashian, thank you. But if you were saying you overspend, uh, you manage to to make the farmers to share the, that what rights with those who are overpopulating. I was going to be excited, but now things are not in that way. And also with the issue of a uh, flesh boom, I think everything you are presenting right now and the answers you are giving, they must have timelines. Because without timelines, we don't know where we, are, where we are going. And the thirdly is the 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 the, the public um, reporting back to the public, so that those who are using those facilities, they are always given the feedback of why you are failing to reach your target at a a a a a a time which was set. So. I, I, I think we need to look at that thing. Everything must have timeline to assist us to know by when shall we expect one, two, three, four. And um, no, thank you. Honorable Smiley, I see your hand up. Honorable Smiley. Sorry, Chairperson, it's an old end. I'll take it down. Sorry, sorry. 
It's coming several times. Can it go down, please? And anyone who is going to respond right now from the department, will you please assist us by not repeating what other manage, managers have said? It's going to save our time because we are left only with 10 minutes to depart. So please assist us. Who is, who is up? Um, Mashamba. Oh. Mema Shamba. Thank you. Oh, the HOD, HOD, are you are you on the platform? Uh, Chair, I I thought because I <clears throat> I was also looking at, at your time pressure to just quickly uh, there was a, a critical question that, which I think I, I have omitted on the the issue of the, the, the online system for, for permit applications. And I yes. think if I understood the uh, honorable Smiley well, um uh, but <clears throat> I, I, he can correct me because I thought my understanding was that is the, the the permit for the hunting permit. But if it's permit for others, then I think uh, I can be corrected on on that. Um, we 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 are not indeed we at the moment we are not on an online system. Um, the, the applications are still done manually, and uh, the the permit. Uh, chair, I think we, we need to be clear on that. That issued by the Department of Economic Development, Environment, and and and, and Conservation, um, not necessarily by by us as a as a department. Um, and then the the the, the, the industries on the issue of the industries which are are performing better uh, than than others. Chair. Um, this, I think, is one of the areas that uh, we will also need to um, uh, look at a, a further analysis. But uh, <clears throat> as we're speaking now, in terms of the, I think, the latest um, uh, data from States SA, um, it was largely the, the, the horticulture, you know, um, Honorable Somali in, Industry. Um, li livestock, yes, um, I think it has been on and off. Uh, but it it it, it varies. Uh, but I think the, the the grain, I mean the the, the horticulture and, and field crops, um, and horticulture in the main, especially our subtrop, you know, our our citrus, they they are the ones that have been leading the pack in terms of the the good performance. Um, the, the there are other industries also that are um, currently sort of trying to 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 grow. Um, also, actually, the commodities rather, not necessarily the industry. Um, your your berries um, is a, is one of the subsector that is currently also beginning to show some growth. I think it's also in response to the the, the global you know market uh, demands. I, I thought I needed to to just touch on that, but I think uh, uh, if 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 uh, given opportunity, we we can maybe go back and do a further sort of analysis for the for the honorable members thank you thank you hod thank you hod i think that analysis is needed you need to do it and you need to add it in the report which will be coming to the portfolio committee and legislature mr nowata mr nowata thank you honorable chair uh, thank you uh, mc and honorable members and colleagues hod uh, it was uh, uh, just to note the winter cropping. I won't take time uh, as raised by Honorable Sishoka. Um, I'll, I'll acknowledge this one, um, uh, Honorable uh, uh, Chair, to say maybe in terms of our planning, we, we just use the normal planning in terms of uh, of taking consideration of what is happening during the the the, 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 the winter season. But I think uh, he's right. We should, we're supposed to factor in the the cropping, and I, I I've noted that one and accepted it. So we'll we'll definitely improve uh, coming to the planning of the the next uh, APP. Thank you very much, uh, Honourable Chair. Thank you, Mr. Noata. Uh, Mrs. Mashamba, me Mashamba. Thank you very much. HR, I saw your hand. Y yes, Honourable Chairperson, and. Uh, 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 honorable members, good morning. Honorable MEC and HOD and colleagues. 
Um, yeah, uh, call, uh, uh, honorable members, thank you very much for the uh, input that were made in terms of the the issue of the uh, uh, appointment of the unemployed uh, graduates. And uh, it is true that uh, in the, I think it, it is in the previous year, we had a similar challenge in terms uh, concerning the delays uh, 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 on the finalization of the recruitment process for unemployed uh, graduates. And we uh, seem to be not doing anything in terms of uh, speeding up or frustrating the process. But the reality is that uh, I think maybe we need to have a common understanding in terms of the recruitment process. Uh, honorable members, the recruitment process rest with a, is no longer within the control of the department. It is rest with the provincial treasury, uh, where in the structure, uh, a PPMC personnel, provincial personnel management uh, committee take decisions in terms of when are we supposed to advertise positions. And there are directives in terms of how should we do the personnel suitability checks from the DPSA. DPSA by then, we were uh, given a directive to say, in order for us to uh, conduct personnel suitability checks, we need to use the, the government, government facilities. Uh, your government facilities like SAPS, your state security agency, and SACWA. And um, <clears throat> in the previous years, we have been doing that, but the challenge is that the reality is that we are solely depending on the external stakeholders. And I think we need to, to, to have a common understanding when coming to that, despite of saying that um, uh, it's like the department were not doing anything. The process, the recruitment process for unemployment uh, a graduate, in terms of planning point of view, it was done on time. It is unfortunate that we received a, an approval around December and January the advert was, 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 uh, was issued. And the closing date was around uh, 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 mid of January. And fortunate enough, we had to speed up the whole process, despite of the enormous pro uh, uh, applications that we had received at our disposal. And fortunately, around February, March, we had concluded the interview processes. Therefore, then the only pending process was the issue of us in terms of obtaining the results on the uh, criminal records, the uh, uh, qualification verification and financial checks. Then when we were we were in the process of that, unfortunately, as and when we were liaising with the, our external stakeholders, the challenge was that, especially on the S SAPS, we could not receive the results on time. The reason being because of COVID-19, uh, 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 restrictions and the threat. Uh, also, the the our fellow colleagues uh, could not actually subject our fingerprints through the due processes. But at the same time, as a department, we did not fold our hands. From the last financial year, we have been trying to procure an in-house um, <coughs> uh, system, the MIE, the system uh, that would actually enable the department to conduct the personnel suitability checks internally, which is the, uh, the managed integrity evaluation system. Unfortunately, due to budgetary constraints, we could not manage, uh, 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 manage to procure that system. The pros procurement process is still underway, and we are, uh, we are trying by all means to uh, get sufficient funds to be able for us to get the system in-house. But previously, as departments, we were not allowed to have any external uh, 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 system that we could uh, 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 that could be used for for the very same process, uh, because we had uh, government uh, services facilities at our disposal, and we're expected to do that as uh, be, uh, due to the nature of uh, 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 the services that we were getting a free service from those uh, stakeholders. Uh, as we are speaking right now, personally, I was engaged in the whole process. And uh, uh, despite the challenges at our disposal that within human resource management, I think it is worth note noting that we are operating at a skeletal staff. Personally, at, at my level, I had to interact with SACWA. Till today, we have not yet received the result from SACWA. The challenges of our fellow uh, uh, colleagues who are operating from home, working from home, is also in, uh, negatively impacting on efficiency. 
They are saying they are working from home. They are unable to access the systems. But what we did as a department, we did not actually just leave the process as it is. What we did, we had to do uh, the conditional appointments. As of now, we are having almost 60 uh, graduates who had already reported on duty in the, in the current quarter. Uh, uh, without even complying with the personal suitability checks. We realized that the, the time now is no longer uh, uh, within our control. Uh, we can no longer wait uh, 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 for longer period than what, what, we, what was expected. So we had to do conditional appointment. We are equally frustrated as a department in terms of getting services from our external stakeholders and hoping that maybe uh, during the budget adjustment we'll be able to get a, a, a additional budget for us to be able to procure this system internally so that we could be able to speed up the recruitment process internally without uh, uh, depending on the external stakeholders. That is what, what the, the, the frustration that we're currently having as a department. And the other challenge that has actually delayed the process, this is a conditional grant, and we have got a framework from DAF. The DAF framework says preference should be given to the unemployed graduates within the province, which is Limpopo, from the colleges. Unfortunately, when, when the process was, was, was unfolding during the shortlisting process, there was an oversight where most of the, uh, the, the shortlisted candidates, they were from the uh, uh, universities, your technicons who are within the agricultural field. Then the, we had to restart the shortlisting process from de novo in order for us to apply to, to comply with the framework from DAF. Because if we would have considered those who are coming from the technicons and the universities, we are not going to be able to cater uh, the, 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 their salaries from, from that conditional grant, which is CASP. But we are not saying, as a department, we are not folding our hands. We are trying as much as we can to make sure that as a department, we speed up the recruitment process internally, despite the challenges that we are having at our disposal, wherein we had to depend on the external stakeholders. Around June, around May, June, we had received a letter from the state security agency, which says that they are no longer going to assist us in terms of conducting personnel suitability checks. Therefore, as a department, we need to see how to finish in terms of making sure that we obtain the results in any of the institution other than state security agency. And honorable members, this is a compliance matter. As much as we want to speed up the process, as I've already indicated, that by May, by around February, March, internally, the process was successfully conclu concluded in terms of shortlisting and interview. It is going to be very much difficult for us to implement the appointment without complying with the regulatory framework of conducting personnel suitability checks. But we are trying our level best to get an in-house system Unfortunately, it's because of the budgetary uh, 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 constraints that are at our disposal. With the help of our... CEO, in conclusion, uh, in conclusion, Mama Shamba, in conclusion. Uh, yeah, thank you very much, Honorable Chairperson and Honorable Members. I'm done. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. I thought you still have a lengthy talk. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Members. I think... Um, with the sort analysis report which we requested that it should be done to us, most of these things will be added because um, for us to ask these questions is that um, we were not told about uh, the, 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 the number of qualified people who applied, who have been, the number which has been given and what my Mashamba is saying it right now. I think they don't correlate, but I think in the uh, the report which will be coming, it will be covered. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable MEC, for 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 closing remarks. If Honorable MEC is not available, please HOD. Uh -huh. uh, thanks, uh, MEC. Uh, um, uh, HFSN, thanks very much. You're welcome. Yeah. You're welcome, Honorable MEC. You're welcome. No, thanks a lot. Um, I think we, 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 we as a department, uh, we have noted all the inputs, the concerns raised by the Honorable Members. 
and we will make sure really that we improve and on the issues that uh, mem- honorable members have raised. And we will also make sure that we meet all the targets that um, uh, you, 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 you were saying that we didn't meet that, that those targets. We'll make sure that in the next, when we report, we meet all the targets. And we'll also um, uh, send the, 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 the request from the short analysis uh, to your office. I thank you, Honorable Chairperson. You're welcome, Honorable MEC. And thank you for your availability together with your management. Uh, Honorable members, Honorable MEC and the management, our support staff, we have reached uh, the conclusion of our meeting. Our meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Chairperson and members. Bye-bye. Thanks, thanks uh, Department uh, of Agriculture. Th- thank you, Honorable Chair.